This video is about why the Fujifilm X-H1 is the ultimate beginner filmmaker camera. Fujifilm X-H1 has a 24 megapixel APS-C X-Trans CMOS 3 sensor. It has a three directional tilting 1.04 million dot touch LCD screen that can be used for focusing in touch to shoot. It shoots in 4K 24p and 4K 30p DCI up to 200 megabits per second, which is pretty impressive. It can shoot up to 120p, but in lesser resolutions, which isn't that bad if you ask me, it does the job. It takes two SD cards, both of the UHS-1 and UHS-2. It has a mini HDMI port for external monitoring and a mic jack for an on a mic. It has a standard Fuji dials on top of the camera with a top screen for viewing your camera settings which can be customized. It has a manual switch on the front of the camera where you can switch between focus modes that's manual focus, continuous autofocus, and single autofocus. You can attach the battery grip which allows for vertical shooting. It has a headphone jack for monitoring your audio, a switch for boost mode which slightly increases the performance of the X-H1 and most importantly it comes with two battery slots for increased battery life. So in total you have three batteries. That is a Fujifilm X-H1 in a nutshell but let's dive deep deeper. some highlights based on use. Although there are two updated versions of the X-H1, you have the Fujifilm X-H2, the X-H2S, and you can even throw in the X-T3, X-T4, and the X-S10 and say there are updated hardware and software versions derived from the X-H1 and the X-T2. You can even look at the X-T5, which is out now, but the Fujifilm X-H1 is a professional grade camera and has some modes and settings that keep it on par with some of the newer cameras on the market. For instance, it shoots an f log It is equipped with the Eterna Profile Simulation, in other words, if you are a Sony shooter, it is equipped with S-Log and s -Cine Tone, but handles noise very well. It has a five axis in-body image stabilization. It has time code capabilities. It also has a clean output when shooting with an external monitor. You can shoot externally with the X-H1, but you are limited to 8-bit color. The versatility and functionality of this camera is impressive, in my opinion. When it comes to manual controls, the X-H1 packs a punch, especially when it comes to navigating and controlling the camera. You have full control of the camera with without actually having to go into the menus, but there are some exceptions for certain functions. There are definitely some downsides to the Fujifilm X-H1, such as a lack of a flip out screen, which isn't a deal breaker. It really depends on the type of filmmaker you are. The X-H1 screen is perfect for photographers, but it is only great for videographers who stay behind the camera. It isn't so great for filmmakers and videographers who are also content creators who vlog unless you use an external monitor. The HDMI does have a clean output, which is great for external recording, but you can also see your camera settings and even go through the menus with the external monitor, which is a perk. Another downside is that the camera camera does not come with any professional exposure tools like the vector scopes, false colors, and zebras. But if you're going to bring out the camera, then having a good external monitor with all of the exposure tools will do you well. Because another downside is that the gamma display assist on the Fujifilm X-H1 isn't that great, which is why I'm recommending getting an external monitor that will allow you to upload a conversion LUT for F-Log. You can upload the free Fujifilm conversion LUT from their website or download the free one I created and use for my videos when I shoot with F-Log, which I posted down in the description. Description. But as I mentioned earlier, the X-H1 does have a clean output when shooting externally, but you are limited to 8-bit color, but luckily Fuji files are great to work with and you can push and pull them as long as it is done with care. But speaking of 8-bit color, 10-bit would be way better. But yes, Fujifilm does have recent cameras that have 10-bit, but you'd really have to want that 10-bit color and want to upgrade and dish out another well over a thousand dollars just for 10 bit now with battery life battery life on the xh1 is horrendous but there is a workaround carry more batteries now i did receive a comment saying that the battery grip on the xh1 does malfunction from time to time and i do want to point that out when getting this camera i'm not sure if you can actually buy it new these days you probably have to buy it used so do make sure that you fully get a chance to handle the camera with the grip and everything and check it out before investing in the Fujifilm X-H1. And because the battery life is so terrible on the Fujifilm X-H1, I would definitely recommend the battery grip and using the power cable or getting a dummy battery and you know, just try and do what you can to extend the battery life. Just what I do, I use the extension cable from the battery grip when I am sitting and recording to make sure the battery doesn't run out. Another downside is the Fujifilm X-H1 only records in 15 minute chunks. With the battery grip, 
grip, you can extend that up to 30 minutes, but if you have a faulty battery grip, then you're only really just limited to that 15 minutes, which is definitely a downside. If you're someone who shoot longer interviews where you need the camera to run 30 minutes to an hour spent, if that's the case, then the X-H1 really isn't a camera you wanna pick up if you do find that you are recording longer sessions. with all of that said would i purchase it again in a heartbeat but i would hold out and save up for the xh2 for the xh2s if the more updated features are pertinent to your workflow but for photography hands down fujifilm xh1 great camera i would pick it up again so yes i would get the xh1 again because of the reasons i talk about in this video right here and if you want to see more videos like this then like and subscribe it'll show me that you want to see more videos like this and do me a favor stay awesome